Zoom was one of the fastest growing companies of last year, increasing its revenue 355% while growing its stock price five times since the start of 2020. And in this video, I'm going to be doing a full breakdown of both the company and their stock. Zoom has grown from a small video conferencing company that had a pretty nice app to one of the largest communication companies in the world, running large enterprises across the world on its platform. Whether it be video calling, Zoom phone, on Zoom, Zoom's new immersive experiences platform, Zoom is trying as hard as it can to continue to grow as quickly as it has the past year. At the same time, revenue growth has dropped dramatically, going from growing 102% quarter over quarter to 17% quarter over quarter to 14% quarter over quarter, all the way down to 8% in their most recent earnings. This is due to wide-scale work from home becoming pretty much normalized across the world and even ending in certain areas, drying up much of the large macroeconomic trend that was driving Zoom's growth in the first place. Hey everyone and welcome to FinTech and in this video I'm going to be analyzing Zoom in light of their most recent earnings announcement, looking at their background as a company, what their most recent earnings show, and what the future of Zoom may hold both for the company and for their stock price. Finally I'll let you know any trades that I personally have made in Zoom and why, and you'll probably want to watch till the end of the video on this one. So let's get started by talking about Zoom's background and what exactly has been happening for the past year and a half. Zoom was founded in 2011 by Eric Wan, a former vice president at Cisco WebEx. He left Cisco in 2011 along with 40 other engineers with the goal of inventing a product that actually addressed the needs of the customers that they were seeing. And he has been CEO of the company ever since. Once Zoom hit the market, their product took off, signing on 500,000 thousand customers in the first five months and increasing that all the way to a million customers just four months later. Zoom finally IPO'd in 2019 and at the time I was actually very interested in both the company and the products that they offered, but I thought the price was just too high to invest in. Zoom continued to grow, increasing their revenue around 80% per year while the stock price remained relatively flat over the next year, until the lockdown started. As we know, the start of 2020 marked a fundamental shift in the economy, with people being forced to avoid contact with each other and often moving to remote working. As people shifted toward a remote working environment, Zoom experienced a once in a decade amount of growth, with pretty much everybody in the entire world learning the name Zoom all at the same time. This resulted in massive wins for the company, both among end consumers as well as enterprise customers, growing the company's revenue two and a half times in under six months, going from 188 million to 664 million dollars. They also increased their total number of users to 300 million, which was nearly a 3,000 percent increase from December of 2019. And this of course led to Zoom's meteoric stock rise, essentially giving us several years worth of growth all in the span of a couple months. But as the lockdown period is ending in much of the world, Zoom no longer has those same macroeconomic trends to rely on to push their product out to more customers. And as most companies that need video conferencing already have a solution in place at this point, Zoom's growth has begun to slow in recent quarters. So in order to counteract this, Zoom is launching new products such as Zoom Phone, on Zoom and Zoom apps, a new platform for running apps directly on the Zoom video conferencing platform. But will these new products be enough to increase Zoom's growth back to the amounts that they saw last year or even the amounts that they were seeing back in 2019? Well, while we could speculate on how Zoom is going to perform as they saturate the video conferencing market, it probably makes a little bit more sense just to look at the numbers that they reported in their most recent earnings report for Q1 2022. Zoom grew their revenue to $968 million this quarter, an increase of 191% year over year and an acceleration in growth from what they saw last year at a growth rate of 169% year over year. But that number is super misleading all on its own because it includes the huge jump in growth that they saw at the start of 2020. To get a better picture of how Zoom is performing right now as opposed to what it was doing a year ago, let's instead look at Zoom's quarter over quarter growth rate. This past quarter, Zoom grew revenue 8.4%. So if we were to extrapolate that to an annualized basis, basically take 1.08 times 1.08 four times, that would equal a year-over-year -year growth rate of around 38%. But that growth rate is also decreasing over time. If we look back at how quickly they've grown their revenue over the past two years, they grew their quarter-over-quarter -quarter revenue 74%, then 102%, then that dropped all the way down to 17%, followed by 14%, followed by their most recent quarterly growth of only 8% quarter-over-quarter. 
over quarter. So at least in terms of their revenue growth, we appear to be at the end of their S-curve cycle where they start to hit market maturation and they don't really see the same explosive growth that they saw in the past. But that doesn't mean that Zoom's earnings numbers are necessarily bad. They saw their dollar-based net retention rate of 130% this quarter for the 12th consecutive quarter. This means that when a customer spends $1 per year on average, the next year Zoom can expect them to spend $1.30. The fact that customers are willing to spend more and more on the platform every subsequent year shows that they really enjoy the product and they're probably not going to leave it anytime soon. Their cash generation looks even more impressive with their operating cash flow increasing 106% year over year and their free cash flow increasing 80% year over year. Or to give that in slightly more useful numbers, quarter over quarter they grew their operating cash flow 30% and they increased their free cash flow 20% in the last three months. Now this growth rate obviously dwarfs the revenue growth that they saw last quarter which seems to show that Zoom is no longer purely focused on growing revenue at all costs and instead is focusing on throwing off cash for investors. Now this strategy isn't necessarily better or worse than their previous strategy of growth at all costs. It's just a different strategy for a different phase in the company's life cycle. They also continue to grow their present outside of the US and the Americas, which is probably going to be key for their future. While they grew their number of customers in the Americas 159% year over year, they grew their customers in APAC and EMEA countries 230%. And those countries in the two shades of green at the top of this chart now make up a larger percentage of their overall revenue than a year ago, helping to diversify their revenue. They also continued to move into the down market, landing more and more customers who had fewer than 10 employees working for them relative to the overall revenue that they made. So finally, let's look at Zoom's forecast for both their next quarter as well as the coming fiscal year. First looking at their next quarter, Q2 2022. They expect their revenue to be between 985 and 990 million dollars, which would represent a growth rate of three to three and a half percent quarter over quarter. Now this is probably a conservative estimate because Zoom pretty much always beats their forecasted earnings, but even so, three to three and a half percent growth is a massive slowdown, especially considering they're already only growing at around 8% quarter over quarter. They expect their earnings per share to be between $1.14 and $1.15, which would represent an increase of 17.5% quarter over quarter, assuming they don't beat this forecast. This is actually pretty solid growth in earnings per share, and it really goes to show that Zoom is focusing on improving numbers besides just their revenue at this point. In fact, over their past three quarters, Zoom has consistently beaten their estimates for their EPS. Now looking at their guidance for the full fiscal year of 2022. They estimate their revenue will be between $3.975 billion and $3.99 billion, up 21% from their last four quarters. Now 21% growth rate isn't bad, but it definitely takes Zoom solidly out of the hyper growth category of companies. Even if they do beat their guidance, at this point they're starting to look more like a traditional software company and not necessarily a growth investment. They forecast their earnings per share for the entire year to be between $4.50 and $4.61. So the story around Zoom is clearly changing from a hyper growth company that has the potential to change the world to a company that's already changed the world and now has the potential to become wildly profitable off the back of that success. With products launching such as Zoom Phone, which should drive growth among existing customers, as well as new products such as On Zoom and Zoom Apps, their third party app ecosystem, which is designed to let other people develop apps for the Zoom platform. As usual, Zoom appears to be a of their competitors in launching these new features, with Zoom app being particularly innovative. In the same way that the iPhone really only became truly useful with the introduction of the App Store and the ability to download third-party apps that aren't made by Apple, I think that Zoom's Zoom app platform has the potential to make them a much bigger company than they are today. On their earnings call, which I ended up reading the entire transcript for to make this video, Zoom says that 80% of those surveyed in the US thought that some level of remote work was here to stay, most likely through a hybrid work from home model. While the video conferencing market may already be saturated, it's not like a lot of companies are going to cancel their Zoom subscriptions once some people are back in the office. This means that Zoom can still leverage their lead in the video conferencing platform to introduce new products by cross-selling to their customers. Zoom events, for example, is one new product which can be used by national or global companies seeking to host events, and they recently signed their largest largest recurring revenue deal ever to deploy Zoom events to 90,000 hosts for one company. Now in general, Zoom has been pretty cagey around the specific product numbers that their products are producing, especially Zoom Phone. We did get some actual details in this earnings call. On the earnings call, the head of Zoom Phone told us that at the end of December, they had 1 million customers paying for Zoom Phone 
and that increased one and a half million five months later. And this was partly tied in with the comment that the CFO made on the call, that they had better than expected results in terms of not only retaining their existing customers, but also upselling them during Q1. So there's a lot of moving parts for Zoom. They still have their existing video conferencing platform. They also have all the new platforms that they want to launch. And they also have the ability to expand into new markets that they haven't already tapped into. But to simplify all these moving parts, the CEO laid out three main priorities for the company. Number one is to preserve company culture. By all accounts, Zoom is an incredibly well-run company with a really solid team that was able to execute under enormous pressure back in 2020. That's a team that's worth keeping together. Two is international expansion. We saw earlier that while Zoom grew pretty rapidly in the Americas, it grew even faster in APAC and EMEA countries. Yuan sees EMEA, APAC, and Japan as major opportunities for growth in the future. And their last priority is to double down on their existing platform through Zoom events, Zoom apps, UC platform, and their HD capabilities. Now I've talked about most of those, and I think HD video is pretty obvious to anybody who's watching on YouTube, but Zoom's UC platform is something we haven't talked about. UC stands for Unified Communications, and it's part of Zoom's push for unified communications as a service. If you've ever used Microsoft Teams integrated with Microsoft Outlook, you'll be familiar with the idea of integrating voice, chat, and email all into a single platform that can be used seamlessly. Now, while this isn't exactly groundbreaking for Zoom, if they can build this platform to the same quality that they have their video conferencing platform, their lead in terms of their brand could absolutely let them grow dramatically into this business. If you imagine a year from now, Zoom has a fully integrated system to allow you to work from home, plus a whole suite of third-party apps that you can add on to your experience to make it more customized, that's a pretty exciting future for Zoom's products. So the question really comes down to will Zoom re-accelerate growth in the future? I don't know. It's definitely possible, and I would never actively bet against Zoom, especially considering their past track record. At the same time, there are already companies out there that are growing 50 to 100% year over year that look a lot more like Zoom from one year ago than they do Zoom of today. So even though Zoom is improving their profitability and they seem to be making smart investments for their future, I sold out of my remaining position in Zoom at around 5% of my total portfolio. I don't think Zoom is a bad investment. It's just at this point, it's not my kind of investment. Also, Zoom very well could re-accelerate growth in the future, and if that does happen, I would be more than willing to re-jump in and buy back into the company. But I don't want my money just sitting in the company hoping that that's going to happen when there's no evidence to support it at this time. I'd rather have that money deployed to other companies that are already growing really quickly. But let me know if you personally have made any trades into Zoom. Don't forget to get your two free stocks from Webull when you deposit $100. Those stocks could be worth all the way up to $1,800, so grab that while it's available. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.